All right, jumping back into it today, I got some updates for y'all. Uh, I did paint the front bash bar thing here. I got that primed up. Subframe's pretty much in. I'm getting ready to do the coilovers. On this side, I put the new bottom arms in. Stand rack's in. I can't really show it because motor's back in. I forgot to show it. I did add this extra bar, this extra brace. And there is, I, I put on another piece of like uh, thick metal on the back of the subframe just to give it like, a little bit more rigidity. So when I weld the pipe to it, back to the subframe, back to the roll cage. It's gonna be all nice and stiff, just to help stiffen up just a little bit. I finally got around to sanding the uh, the upper control arms and whatnot. And the driver's side looks like I'm gonna need to replace it. Um, it's hard to tell, but the needle nose bearings inside are completely toast. I have another set on, on the table. Actually, they're right here in this bag. I got some new bearings that I had for a while. I'm gonna see if I can fit them in. Either way, if I do fit that in, that I can save this piece, but the shaft itself, is all, uh, it's ground down. It's not even the right diameter anymore. So it'd, it'd fit nice and loose in the needle nose bearings. It wouldn't help me out. So I'll need to replace this shaft. Hopefully I can get this out and replace the bearing. Then I want to replace this. I can save some money on that. The other one seems to be good. I painted that one up. The bearings in there are fine. I'm gonna probably replace the bearings anyways, but the shaft itself is still good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just covered in grease. That one seems to be okay. All right, so today is October 2nd, Sunday. As for today, I think I'm gonna try and get the other Passer side stair knuckle back on, the upper control arm, and then get the coilovers situated back on. I'll get my tabs up here so I can do my coilovers. So I'll try and get that sorted today. The other side, I don't know how I'm gonna make out yet because I still have to fix that other upper control arm. All right, so I'm not greasing these up yet because they're gonna come out again anyways. And obviously I'm gonna paint all these again. It's just for the time being, I hate when working when it's full of grease and whatnot. So it's just nice just to clean them up. I haven't really seen where the steering rack is going to sit relative to the steering knuckle yet. So I'm kind of scared about that. This is the only spot it could sit in. So this is where I'm going to really find out what's really going on. Pretty sure that goes like that. This goes on top of like that. This can go back in here. Like so. goes like that yeah I'm not going nuts with the lock washers on here I'm just gonna snugged up just so I can get the trail up and down nice and free good to go all right let's get this steering knuckle in I didn't go like nuts clean this. You can see all of it's all like still gunked up and whatnot. I'll be taking them fully apart and going back. That one goes there. All right, so it looks like we already have maybe a problem. Um, at full droop, this is already hitting the steering rack. Right here, the control arm is hitting the steering rack. Probably gonna be bumped out like that, though. I wonder if there's a way. See, I know this is like way too low, and this is gonna probably be up here somewhere, you know, once the car's like lowered a little bit. So I wonder if there's a way I could put this on the bottom so it'd be more like in line with the steering rack. Can't really flip this one because the top and bottoms are offset. The bottom control is longer than the top. So in theory, like the bottom ball joint is more towards like away from the car. This one's more in towards the car. So flipping upside down would really throw off the camera and whatnot. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to have a sit down and think about this, but I can still do the coilovers. It's a little close to here. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little close to here. I think it's just gonna clear it. If not, I can always trim a little bit of this out, do like a little half C shape. But it seems like it's gonna clear. I just have to mirror it, image the other side and the height as best as I can. And just two two little tacks hold them in place and we'll be good i'm not going to fully weld them because i do want to put the car in the full like much weight as i can i think the car is going to be 
before I flake tack these in and see like the height. So just a tack on top and bottom should be fine enough to hold it. That's what I did on the other side. In case I gotta move them like down or up or whatever. I'll pick a spot and I'll tack it on. All right, I think that's good. It looks somewhat the same height as the other side. Just looking at the tabs. Picking up where I left off on the steering rack, I might as well go straight to the steering knuckles and look at this because there's a little few issues too that I have to work out. Mainly right here where your tire would connect to your steering knuckle. It's a little too high. It's, it's fine in the factory mini, but uh, not on my steering rack. Pushed forward and it's actually lower. I have a problem, so we'll start with this. I'm gonna take this off. The hell with that. And we moved it down. I'm gonna try and explain this. I'll show you what I did here. It's not done yet, it's still like in test phase. But uh, what I have going on is I took this arm off the opposite side steering knuckle and I flipped it and I have it reversed. So instead of this arm leaning inward, I have it leaning outward like this. But I have to use the opposite one because of where the, where the, uh, the tie rod connects into here, it's on a wedge. So if I use this one, it'd have to be on top. But the steering rack is lower than it, so I have to use the other one so it comes into the bottom. Like so. And it keeps it nice and straight, almost level with the bottom control arm. Doing that, because it extends out the wrong way, I had to add on a piece of metal right here. Yeah, you can see. I milled out this piece of steel in the lathe, and I ground it down, and I welded it right to the end of this uh, tie rod. Uh, I kept this cool, so the rubber on this is still, there's nothing wrong with it. I locked it up. So it fits here now, which is all good. Yeah, so the main reason why I'm not doing this on the top two is because there's no way I'm gonna get this steering rack to bolt up here without being on a crazy angle or even a bunch of spaces. It's just not gonna work. It's just, it's a f flexing point. It's a point where a failure could happen. Yeah, I made a plate and I welded like these two holes exactly but on the bottom, which there ain't room for one, so I had to make it out of 3 8 plate. Drilled it, tapped it, and I'll kind of show it here in a second. I do have it on there and it seems to work pretty good. Uh, biggest concerns, this is all cast, so I had to really weld it pretty good. I had to put a lot of penetration into it. Did a thousand passes on it, so it should be, it should hold up to the task. And I'm gonna reinforce it some more. Once I get off, I'll show it, but I'm gonna add in some more like plates going sideways from here to here. I'm gonna stare at left and right for you guys. This is just the passenger side. The other side's not hooked up yet. This is still just try and error. That's all the way to the right. Looks pretty good. Seems to function. And that's to the left. With the wheel off, I can jack it up and show you. Still pretty good. That's all fine and dating. I think it's gonna work pretty good. Clearance down here is pretty close. The boot's already rubbing part of the bottom of the subframe, so I will have to like grind that out and smooth it out a little bit. It's not rubbing too bad. It might be enough to just tear it and fatigue it over time. So I might go ahead and address that later on. It is close to this bottom arm. I don't think it'll ever hit, because right now the car is like fully jacked up. If I go any lower, I could always space this arm on, put spaces in here and drop it down just a tick. I got a spacer. The bottom arm piece thing. Two Allen bolts that go through and thread. I might put a captive nut on top. I might not. I might just have it as a not permanent bolt. So I can still have access to the actual shaft itself. So I can pull it out. But anyways. This is the clearance I have. So I can't really space this out too much more without it coming too close to hitting that bolt. So I think right where it is, it's pretty good. Inside the knuckle where the shaft is, the actual shaft is. Normally, it looks like this. But I cut this off the end. Okay. I had to cut it off to make clearance for this bracket I'm making. I trimmed these bolts down, they don't have to be that long. They're just there for makeup use. But yeah, took that down, just grind it smooth, no big deal. Yeah, I haven't done anything with the driver's side yet. So I'm just doing a passenger side just to make sure this is gonna work out. And once I think it's pretty much I'm happy with it, I'll go ahead and do the other side. None of this is really filmed. I'll film the other side and try to mirror image it. These holes replicate the top mount holes up here. They're exactly in line. I got it in on my voice. I got, was able to get it leveled out pretty good. And the turning radius is still, I think it's somewhat close. It might not be as much, but if I need to do a shopper turns, you can always pull out the inboard tie rod. You can pull out the tie rod, the inners, 
and grind them down or put a spacer in, it'll let the steering rack inside go more. You can turn it more left and right, which will then give you more shop returns on these, which I'll probably end up doing. Could do that, or you can shorten up this arm. If you shorten up these arms, if you make the hole closer to the knuckle, you get more steering angle. But uh, I, I don't want to go too steep or too tight because then you risk hitting this uh, front control arm piece. I don't want to do that. Or you can hit this firewall here, which is probably me cut out and made more from any anyways. I want to get enough angle to where it's just going to barely touch this and I'll make some sort of bump stop and then I'll be happy. I already started cutting this piece off here. I got to finish that. Uh, I got carried away because I really wanted to see it, so I didn't even finish it. I got to fit the old caliper on and make sure I have clearance because I want to do a piece from this inside wing up to here, like a triangle, and weld it all in. Hard to see, but I welded the freaking snot out of the inside of here and this bottom side. Let me get this off and I'll show you. It is a factory knuckle, unmodified. Here's the one that's modified. Got it all welded up. Before I cut the rest of this off, this is a good time to show you guys how this is working out. Where the calipers go on, it's got a nice flat surface on both sides. So I use that as an advantage to help me uh, get this pipe in perpendicular to these. So it's at a perfect 90. So I take my square and I lay it flat on this, right, flat on this. Then you put this flat side level and you put a pair of vice grips and you clamp it. That's nice and squared up there. And that's how I weld it in. This is perfectly parallel or perpendicular to these flanges, so it's perfect. So I can use that as a vantage to do the other knuckle to match it up pretty good. So it'll be exactly in the same spot on each side knuckle. So staring should relatively be the same or straight. And one other thing. When this arm is bolted into the, into the knuckle, it has these pins and they go right in so they fit nice and tight. And that's just there so this can't like wiggle side to side once the, it is tightened down. It makes sure it'll never wiggle. I don't have that on this side now. So these are just snug, but hard to see, but we'll wiggle back and forth. When they're tight, it should be good. But I'm gonna try and make like something that'll help keep it from wiggling if something did come loose or whatever. I don't really have a milling machine, so I can't really mill into this. I can make the washers that push in, but I can't make it tight enough because I don't have the right, like, I don't have a vertical milling machine, so I can't really do that. Uh, the only other option, just make sure it's super tight, or I could take another piece of plate and weld it, like right here, but make it so it's butted up pretty tight on the back side. So we, it'll just help with the wiggling. For instance, just make this super tight and then just weld this up, like clamp it and make it super tight. I mean, I doubt I'm gonna take these off again, but if I do, I'll just have to cut this weld. If it is too tight, it might just come off, but I'd rather just make it tight just for extra insurance. And of course, I'm gonna do a bracket like this, right there. That's where it was before, and that's the difference. So it's a big drop, big drop difference, which is good because the steering rack is super low in the car because it sits under the transmission. So that kind of like makes up for it. And I think it's good enough to at least do a road test. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with. All right, that'll do it. I don't think I'm gonna put another triangle on this side, just cause that being the bottom, if water does get in here, rain water and whatnot, I want it to splash out. Uh, I think it will be too close to the caliper. I'll just grind up, smooth this out, make it look pretty good. Uh, I, it should be all right, cause I know a lot of steering kits, they usually modify their steering knuckles and usually those are all cast iron and they usually will cut them and weld them. And that's like a heavier car too. I was just watching some videos, some dude did it on like, like a 240, he cut his, turned it up, welded it, and he drifts it, beats the hell out of it, and it lasts until it doesn't last, basically. I'm willing to take that chance. I really did glob the hell out of it, so I mean, I think it'll be all right. I put a lot of heat too, I turned the welder up one notch. Uh, I put that lock-in plate in front here, I just kind of welded it up. Right now it's all tight, 
I'm just gonna loosen these just a little bit. And just being loose, like finger tight, there's no movement yet. Let me go a little more here. All right, so I have up and like forward and back movement, so it's loose. But side to side, there's like just a smidge. There's a lot less than what there was before. So I'm gonna call that a like success, you know? I mean, once they're cranked down fully, I'm sure it'll be fine. Let's take it off and make sure it even comes off. I had it clamped with a pair of ice grips, you know? Why I welded it, but it is super tight to it. And I am running spacers behind here. They're just kind of free floating. I don't know if I want to weld those in completely yet or just kind of leave them as is. I think I'll just leave them for now, just in case I want to like shim them down a little bit or whatever when uh, alignment and next, when that comes into play, I'll have, I'll have a little bit of adjustment. A little hot. Yeah, so this still comes out nice and easy and it's super squared up right there. Out of this part of the knuckle, once you get these locating pins out, they're recessed in and it doubles as a nice flush look when you use your Allen bolts. You can't beat that. Also, these did not just pop out. They were a pain in the ass to get out. I was able to save two of them, but I also destroyed two of them. All right, next I'm gonna cut this axle shaft. And the goal here is to, uh, you don't wanna cut it right here. There's a little felt piece that goes on that protects the bearing from getting dirt in it. You also, you just wanna cut it just up on the edge here a little bit. And then I'd like to put this in a lathe and finish it off. I tried to deal them, but it's, it's so hard to steal that it's had a hard time cleaning it up. So I just used an angle grinder and cleaned it up pretty good. This is the old one, that's trash. Not too bad for an angle grinder, huh? It's almost like I put in a lathe, but I didn't. All right, I already got my piece marked up. Got a line here and a line here is my first drill hole. Uh, there's no way to really explain that. Just kind of eyed it up realistically. And I looked at the other one, kind of like matched it up.
Next, I'm gonna fill in this gap right here. I'm gonna fill it all with weld on this side and the bottom side on the back. This back piece is all set up, all fully welded in. This next piece I gotta do is this little triangle. It's gonna live right here. So I'll get this welded in and check back in real quick. Triangle's in, we're fully boxed up, we're good to go. Just gotta make a couple more cuts, and that'll be about it. Mainly this section right here, I gotta just shave this off, grind down smoothly. So next I'll be putting on the, my stopper plate to help stop uh, any sorts of movement or wiggling if something came loose while I was driving. I don't have these locking pins, so like, these are just pretty snugged up. See how it wiggles just a little bit? I guess that could happen. Those locking pins will, well those recessed locking pins will prevent that. And I don't have those or a milling machine to make those holes. But even when they're just pretty snug with the arms, they're pretty tight, it's good. So what I'm gonna do here is just get these tight where they would be, like that. And then I'm just gonna weld on a piece of plate right here, but like super snug up. The only way to make it super snug with a pair of ice grips. Level it out, make sure it looks pretty even. So right there, I'll keep it clamped in, throw a big fat weld on the back side, let it cool off, and then I can pull this off. Got my stopper welded in, it's still cooling off. Let me remove my protective bolts. Other than that, I just gotta grind down some sharp edges and throw some primer on it. We'll clean it up first, of course. Yeah, get this bolt off and then we'll go. All right, so we're good. I got them all cleaned up. I just threw some primer on them quick. I'm just letting them dry. I can't put this other side on fully yet until I get the pin for the uh, upper control arm. I'm waiting for that to come in the mail. But other than that, the driver's side is ready to be assembled minus that. Passenger side is all set up for now. So until I get that aside, I can actually see what's going on. Just see how everything's going.